I don't know why we're having that mindset. How to preach the gospel without a backlash? They they trying to design the message of the gospel in a certain way that can be acceptable for everybody. Hey guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm here with Yvonne. I'm here with Emil. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, today is going to be an interesting topic because we're going to talk about, as Christians, we need to be proud about what we're preaching, right? And we need to be bold and we need to be loud about what we're sharing because of what Jesus done on the cross. And what the episode is really centered at is Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'll read that and we can start our discussion. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greeks. For it is the righteousness of God, uh, sorry, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, Paul is saying he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And the reason why he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he's saying, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. So there is good news in the gospel. So it's not something that we can hide. It's not something that we want to keep in the dark. It's something that we want to tell the whole world. Yeah. And the reason why we want to tell the whole world is because in the message, there is salvation, right? If the world does not hear the message, then there is only the wrath of God, yeah. right? Awaiting for these people. And verse 18 and onward goes on about the wrath of God. Yeah. And we can maybe discuss some of that. But why don't we start with Christian struggles with being open about the gospel? Well, uh, this is, as it says here, this is something about faith. So that's why I think it's not a worldly thing. It's something out of this world. Okay. Right? Faith is out of this world. Faith is not in the natural. Yeah. And that's why there is this thing about being ashamed. Because you're talking about something that this world doesn't, doesn't know about. Like, doesn't, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not something that people in the natural can grasp. And that's why there is that element of maybe people um, become, I guess they're not ashamed, but then they become ashamed because of people's reactions. I think that's what happens a lot. Um, a lot of times when someone first hear the message and they're like, this is great. And then, you know, they go and share it and then they start to get some maybe persecution. Maybe mm -hmm. some people are tell, telling them that what they're saying doesn't make sense. You know, and, and, and as Paul also says, you know, um, it doesn't make sense for those who are perishing. And everyone is perishing if they don't have, have the gospel, if they don't have Christ. So that is, it's the worldly reaction that makes people feel the shame because you're not talking about something that's of the world. Cool. So something that is foreign, right? Yeah. Something that, um, and as you said, sometimes we can... Um, feed on people's reaction yeah. right instead of being encouraged by the word of god instead of being encouraged by the message we're looking at how people are reacting to the message and we're kind of allowing that to dictate yeah. how we should feel but about the gospel at the same time i mean everyone goes through a learning experience so mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you're new and it happens to you you, you could get discouraged right yeah and, but the, as you're saying i think if you love God, mm -hmm. you'll always come back to the word and that it's kind of like it feeds you again. Okay. So cool. good example, that would be Peter. Yeah. Right. So um, Peter was, was, you know, one of the main um, disciples. He was the one that Jesus, Jesus told him, you know, you are the rock and I'll build my church on that rock. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and then after that, it's, it's Peter who denies uh, Jesus. And, you know, ironically, the day before or the night before, Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me. 
Peter wouldn't didn't believe it. He didn't like so he's he was a full on Christian. You know, he was full on and Jesus told me you're gonna deny me. And Peter's like, No, I'm not. But what happens? He he denies him. So and, and then and then of course um Peter comes back to that and he he's the one who's the main person, you know, preaching to, you know, the thousands of people. But it can ha- it happened to Peter and it, I think it happens to every Christian. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Do, do you see that more of like a moment thing? There was a moment in a Christian's life where they might go through a doubt. They might go through, say, a, discour- what, a discouragement, discouragement yeah. in, in sharing the gospel. But do you think that is just a phase and you just obviously get back on your horse and, and continue sharing the gospel and, and being proud of what the message is all about? I mean, most of the time, uh, we're afraid to stick out. We're afraid to be that nail that sticks out because usually the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. Um, it, it is a fear. It is justifiable. I mean, sometimes in some countries, when you stick out, you get li- the literal hammer, you know, uh, with nails um, like Jesus did. So there is a genuine reason. So it's not like it's uncalled for to be afraid. No, sometimes it's justified. Sometimes it could put you in danger. Sometimes it could put your family in danger. But ultimately, what's at stake? Once we remember what's at stake, which is, yes, we could perish here on earth. But is is that more scary than perishing later on? Is our first death here on earth like more important than what's going to happen in the afterlife for eternity? So sometimes it takes some some time to get out of that moment that that the heat of the moment and and sometimes to meditate on what happened and see where we went wrong and understand the situation fully once we step back from it that we realize that we made a mistake that could take some people one day to realize sometimes it's then in that moment the moment that they you know for example held their mouth because and didn't speak the truth because they were afraid in that moment they realized that there's something wrong and they're afraid to repent from it straight away. What a good point, just to touch up on a point that you made, is, you know, sometimes there's like the fear of death, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think in this world, there's a bit of a scale. Maybe it is there, for someone, it isn't a fear of death. It's just a fear of um, being the one who sticks out, just maybe a little bit inconvenient. I wouldn't say it's just inconvenient. Social death is just as important as your physical death. Okay, some that's people. a good point. Because um, if you're a social outcast, if you're like a social pariah, then yeah. sometimes it's almost equivalent to death. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at mm. is maybe uh, the the stakes for that person mm. isn't really that high. Maybe it's just okay. a little bit of inconvenience. They're just not bothered. So they're, yeah, they're not bothered. Yeah. So I guess there is maybe that Definitely. level. Maybe so there is death, but maybe there's just someone who's just not bothered and Definitely. just wants to fit in. Um, and it wouldn't have even been a social <clears throat> death or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but I want to highlight a point from uh, Ezekiel mm-hmm. chapter 33, where um, it's talking that the prophet needs to prophesy, needs to preach the word and preach righteousness to the unrighteous. Right. And if not, it actually says that the person who didn't preach will be condemned. So the person who is righteous, but he didn't preach the word, he didn't do what God told him to do he would be condemned along with the person who's living in sin Mm -hmm. so uh i think that's it's important that to know that you know if 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 god tells us that if if we're not preaching the word we will also be condemned according to that verse but at the same time i just want to clarify this is an important point it doesn't mean that you know every person that walks past if you don't preach to him well you're going to hell Mm -hmm. so a lot of this is is based on the Spirit of God. You know, we don't save people. Jesus saves people. And I think a lot of times to be effective in that sort of thing, we have to have the Spirit. We have to have connected to God. And that's what made Peter successful, even though he fell. Yeah, yeah. And, and with Ezekiel, obviously, because of the lack of preachers yeah. and the godly men in Israel, um, they were dragged along to Babylon. Mm, yeah. So even though they were righteous in their own way, um, I mean, before God, 
they still receive the same punishment because as a nation, they were all taken to mm -hmm. Babylon. If you look at the New Testament, it speaks, uh, Paul says, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel, mm -hmm. if I don't share the good news. Yeah. If we have that perspective as Christians, I think that is not something that would put fear in us, but it will be more of a motivation for us. Mm. Because when it comes to the message of the gospel, you're always going to have rejections. You're always going to have persecution. And, and the reason why for that is because not everyone's going to agree with the message. Not everyone's going to accept the message. If you look at 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18, He's saying, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, yep. but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. He uses the same um, uh, the same term Powerful. for for the mm. for the Romans one. Mm. He speaks about that the the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That that message, but there are people who are perishing. To them, it is foolishness mm -hmm. to them they would reject you they would persecute you and there is nothing abnormal about that because jesus said if they mocked if they called the master um Beelzebub, then what do you expect they're gonna do with my servants mm. right and even also paul goes further in that in with timothy when he was speaking to timothy he says that every Christian must suffer. Mm -hmm. There is always going to be suffering when it comes to preaching the gospel. The idea is that, and, and sadly we see this today. And I don't know why we're having that mindset. How to preach the gospel without a backlash. They, they try to design the message of the gospel in a certain way that can be acceptable for everybody. You're like, if that was the case... Jesus would have told his apostles how to do that. The point of the gospel is there are people who will accept and those who will reject, those who will have eternal life and those who will be punishing you, persecuting you and rejecting you and mocking you for it. So you can't design the message of the gospel in a way where you're like, you know what? That won't bring shame to me. The idea is that if if I am proud in the message, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be shamed. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be persecuted, degraded. You know, it doesn't mean that they're, they're not going to blaspheme the person of the message, which is Christ. The point is, when I'm coming to share the gospel, my joy is in the message. My salvation is in the message. I think that's a really good point that you've, you've brought up, which is, um, it's whether someone's heart and joy uh, is in the message compared to whether someone who's just doing it because they've been told that's the right thing to do. Yeah, and, and look, there are people that would hide so many things. I know for a, per, uh, for a fact, like that was even something brought up with my brother. We were just listening to a sermon. He says, have you noticed this guy doesn't mention a type of sin? He just says sin. And, and the reason why he does that is because he's got a lot of groups, a lot of his listeners. He might get offended. Might get offended with certain <laughs> sins. So he would not speak about homosexuality. He would not speak about adultery. He might not speak about fornication. But when he says sin, often what the viewer does, it's in our nature. What the viewer does, he might think about lying or swearing. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I've got to deal with that sin. But you're not really touching the heart. Conviction. Yeah, you're not convicting the person. And when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit in the Gospel of John, he says, I'm sending you a helper. He's the spirit of truth. He comes to convict the world. He comes to judge the world. So if we are preaching the Gospel and we're not seeing the conviction that you would see, for example, in Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. the Bible says after, after they <clears> heard, the message of Peter, the Bible says that they were cut to the heart. And they said, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. Right? So the point is, we are here to move that message forward. Right. But in doing so, 
we have to accept and expect persecution. Just on that point, though, I want to ask, I mean, you know, yes, it, we, we get persecuted, but do you think there's been instances where that persecution was undue because of the actions of the, the preacher? Maybe could it have been that he's been doing it in a way and pushing it in the wrong direction to get undue persecution? Like, do you think that there are people that just preach in the wrong way? Yeah, I, I would share mine and uh, Emil can share his. To be honest with you, when I share the gospel, it's never the same. Every person, God leads me in a certain way to share the gospel with them. Some people, I don't know why, I'm very strict, very harsh. And I'll be like, dude, you got to repent of that. You got to change your life. And other times I feel like, oh God, why are you... Why you why why am I showing so much compassion? Mm. And the reason why is the message is the same. Mm. But the way we deliver it to a person, we don't know their circumstances. But the Holy Spirit does. does. Yeah. Which is why the Holy Spirit sometimes might lead a preacher who's sharing the gospel to be going all out, you know, it's about sin, hell, judgment, and you see people repenting, you're like, wow, oh, that's amazing. Sometimes you see the preacher is like the most compassionate person. Next week, you're like, that's the same person. Mm -hmm. Yet, you see a different group coming to the Lord. I don't know the person's situation. Maybe that person is so broken in life, he's looking for hope. And you bring that hope and compassion, and he's like, that's what I've been waiting my whole life. There are other people who are not broken. They're living a life of pride. Yeah. There's so much arrogance in them. And the, the message of the gospel comes to bring humility and bring reality. So it's the same message. It's, it's the point is when I'm sharing the gospel, I'm like, Holy Spirit, you know his heart. Lead me. How am I going to speak to that person? That's my I, I way. Think, I think delivery is important. Um. And we have to have wisdom and patience to know how to deliver it, to when to deliver it, and who to deliver that message to, in, in what way. Um, for example, I had some people that were very prideful in their sin. They loved their sin and they were sure, well, at least they had lied to themselves enough to believe that God, God is okay with what they're doing. And I spoke to those people harshly, but with love and patience, of course, but... I wouldn't have spoken to them the same as somebody else that's humble and knowing that they're like broken, 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 broken and yeah. like, you know, contrite, like about, about their sin, about what they're doing. No, it's, I, I said, I, I was very clear. I said, look, I love you, brother, sister, I love you with all my heart. I do. And I say this from love because I know where you're headed is not heaven. Mm. I know for a fact, if you continue the way you live, I'm not condemning you. I'm s stating a fact. The way you're living your life right now, if you continue in that, you're headed for hell. And I love you too much to not say anything. So I'm telling you now, what you're doing is wrong. And this is why it's wrong. And this is what you need. And this is the way out. Now, that person, two of those people that I had that similar message to, because they were both very prideful, they both said, I don't want to hear it. I said, all right. I did my part. Right? I said, fair. I respect that. You don't. They just said, look, Emil, please don't talk to me about this again. I still love you. I still care about you. I can't be that close of a friend to you anymore. We're still, well, we're still acquaintances. I still care about you. If you call me and say, hey, man, I changed my mind. I need help. By all means, I'm there for you. That's in line with the word of God. You know, you can tell the person and then you're free. You're free of your obligation. <clears throat> I've, I've got no judgment. It's now on there. Yeah. yeah. And I had another person also. Um, they were part of a certain group um, of prideful people. Um, if you know, you know. Um, they have a rainbow flag. Um, so those, that person was part of that group. And uh, this is a long time ago. And they were telling me about how they believed in God. And I said, look, God loves you. I know he does. He loves you. Right now he loves you. But he hates what you're doing. He hates that you are the way you are. But he loves you. Right? If you're, if you're a parent and you're, 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 you're children, you love them, right? But if your child is a thief, do you love that they're a thief? No, but you still love your child, despite them being a thief. You would still do your best to... If you had to give your life up for your child, right? For them to be good, 
for them to come to Christ modern, you have to physically die. Would you do that? Otherwise, course, they'll, they will anything would, for my children, anything for your children, anything you would give your own life. So I said, that's what God did for you. If that's not proof that he loves you, I don't know what is. I don't know what more can he do than other than literally give his life up. Right. Yeah. Give them as literally bankrupted heaven for you. Gave up the most important thing in heaven, which is himself or you. I, what, what else? What else can they be? Yeah. If that's not proof enough that he loves you, I don't know what it is. And this, I don't know what else there is. This is the proof that he loves you. Now it's on you. If you love your sin more than him, if you love what you're doing right now more than him, then I'm sorry, you're not a Christian. You don't believe in God. You believe the same way the demons do. Mm. That he exists. Yeah. That he's there. That he is a God. He's not your God. And, and that kind of connects with what we were <clears throat> talking about earlier mm -hmm. in the sense that we're, we're not being bold enough when it comes to sin. Like when you go back to Romans chapter 1, we read 16 and 17. But then when you read the second half of the chapter, it speaks about that they no longer wanted to worship God. They wanted to worship the creation. Mm -hmm. They no longer wanted to focus on the natural order of creation that God has put there. Rather, they started to mingle in these sexual activities well, it is to God an abomination, right? Homosexuality, bestiality, and so on. And the Bible speaks about it in Romans 1 as the wrath of God is upon all ungodliness. Mm -hmm. And and Paul, not being ashamed of the gospel, he was also not ashamed and not afraid to point sin out, right? The, the whole point of the gospel is shedding light on the ugly truth, on the dirty uh, room that, that, that you're living in and saying, hey, look how dirty your room is. Look how filthy it is. The reason why you can't see it is because it's so dark. You don't know what's around you. But the gospel is that lie to shine and say, okay, I'm guilty of my sin. I need a savior. Yeah. And as Christians, we can't deny the fact yeah. That God wants us to be bold about yeah, it. Because it's, it's like you can't just give a medicine and say, hey, there's this medicine. I don't need the medicine. Yeah. No, you do. Because you need both parts. So some people say, oh, just preach the gospel. But, and don't talk about people's sins. But then how would they know that they need the gospel? Yeah, it's, the, well, it's part it's, of the it's, message. It's, yeah. it's illness, cure. You can't just say there's a cure for, for what? For what? Mm. Oh, I can't talk about for what? Yeah. Like, come on, like it's, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Right. And, and that's the Christian understanding. <laughs> yeah. Right. The Christian understanding is that God gave us the commandments in the Old Testament, not because he expected us to live up to them. God no. knew that we could not live up to them, but it was a sign of showing our immorality, our nature and our uh, need for a savior. Yeah. Need for so yeah. That, that's why it's building up to the New Testament. To bring this person to say, you could not pay your own debt. I'm here to pay it for you. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we're so happy when it involves us in the gospel. Oh, I've been saved. Oh, the message of, of the gospel is so good. But then it's not for us to be kept. It's, it's for us shared. to share. Yeah. That's why Jesus tells his apostles when he sends them out. He's saying, freely you've received, freely give. For us, it's the gospel. We've received it freely. It was paid by Jesus on the cross. Let's share it with abundance. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's what I really want to share in this video. Is that yeah. If you're so happy about what God has done for you, why can that not be for your neighbor? Why can that not be for your colleague? Why can that not be for your fellow students in your school? We told them about and who's nice restaurants. Yeah, and, and and who's dictating what other people should believe? If I come with that mindset of saying, oh, I'm sitting next to Ivan, but I don't think Ivan is interested in the gospel. Who am I to say that? How do I know that if I, if I share the gospel to Ivan, Ivan would be like, are you serious? You've kept this away from me. Yeah, you know, that's actually the biggest thing uh, that I've seen is is uh, I've thought maybe some obstacles are exactly that. Maybe this guy doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it. In, like something unexpected. Mm. 
And but when you do share, when you do just step out in faith, and and a lot of times the spirit sort of pushes you, you kind of feel mm-hmm. it. And when you do, it's you like, see a reaction. Yeah. You see a reaction of that person that you didn't expect. Yeah. Um. So that's that. I was actually going to share that as testimony, but you, you said no. It's, look, it's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. And and the idea is, if Jesus paid a huge price, which Emil was saying, God left heaven for this. The least you could do is open your mouth and share it. Like, just to share the message, is that a big deal for you? And, and look, we don't, we don't have to do it forcefully. It's very easy. Like, personally, for me, I always say, Holy Spirit, make a conversation open. Mm-hmm. Two, three sentences down the line, we're already talking about God. Yeah. How's your family good? How's my family good? What do you do on the weekend? That's what I normally do. What do you do on the weekend? I do a barbecue, this is that. And often people ask, well, what about you? I we do. go to church. Yeah. There you go. Conversation open. Mm. You can find very easy ways yeah. to open up a conversation about God. What I tell people is don't be a salesman. Yeah. Don't say, hey, do you know about Jesus? And you talk, people know what a salesman is. Mm. What they care about is seeing a human being yeah. with compassion, with love, with care. And they're like, okay, I'm happy to listen to this and, guy. And where it, it's real. Yeah, it's, it's real genuine. and it's natural. Yeah, it's genuine. Mm. So to me, my conversations with people is always genuine and it's always natural. Mm. Because I don't come out like a salesman. I just talk about my life. They talk about their life. And since my life is all about God... It's always going to be, I'm always going to share about And the other thing is, it's what's the fruits, what's in your heart, what's the treasures of your heart is, Mm -hmm. that's what will come out. If you're not thinking about God, if if you're not maybe praying beforehand, having that connection with God, you're just thinking about other things. uh, Well, then you're kind of going to be empty and you don't have anything to offer the other person. And you know what, sadly, and I think this is like a personal problem for that Christian is that they heard the, the, the word, they were full of joy, but the worries of life choked that message, took away that joy. And that's why you see often Christians, when they have discussions with non-believers, it's about work. It's about how, for example, to make money. It's about the struggles of marriage and so on. And they would sit down there for an hour, talk about life, And that Christian would never bother talking about God because he himself is no longer putting that message in the center of his life. And those things are pretty, like, I don't know, like depressing. Like, you're hearing about someone's work. I mean, what's work? Work is like slavery of, (laughs) you know, you got to go somewhere for like 60% of your whole week Mm. um, doing something for someone so you can... That you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, And that's the funny thing is like, you complain about work But when you read Hebrews chapter 4, it speaks about eternal rest, which is our heaven, our Sabbath. So tell people, oh, you you hate work? Well, if you have Christ in your life, you're going to have eternal rest in him. And that rest can start today. It doesn't have to be when you you die. It's today. When you have Christ in your life today, it makes a whole Mm -hmm. different, you know, know, it changes your whole life. Uh, Look, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts on it? Yeah, so uh, I guess it's, it's like I said, what's in your heart. It's where your treasures are. And it's you cannot give something that you don't have. So uh, your love for God, your love for His Word is going to produce a lot of conversation. It's, it's not going to be a struggle. It's not going to be hard when you have love for God and when you're hearing what the Holy Spirit uh, is telling you to do uh, or and telling you what to say uh, if you're just someone who does it because the church tells you to do it and it's like a chore and there are a lot of religions that are like mm-hmm. that um, you're going to get nowhere with that cool. so it's it's the relationship with God cool yeah um, another thing I, I think about the people that I've missed the opportunity to preach to and I might never see them again and I just imagine those people you know perishing and that hurts it's um uh, so don't regret, you know, make sure if you have the opportunity, take it uh, always, because otherwise you'll just have that regret forever. 
Great. Um, to be honest with you, I just want to share this. That that would be my closing statement. It, God put in my heart to share that, and hopefully you can meditate on it. Matthew ten twenty seven to thirty three. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are you are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the father's from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more uh, of more value than many sparrows. 32 and 33 is important. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. So just want to encourage you. Some people might not take God's God seriously, but God takes himself very serious. And God's reputation is very important to him. As ourselves as well. So hopefully you can meditate on what we've shared and let us know. Put in the comments what your experience is and how you feel about the episode. We would like to hear from you. God bless you. Take care. Take care.